Right, we have a Tamiya Scania 77S. Why don't these cameras ever pick up the true colour? Because it's not doing it justice of what the red is. But anyway, it is more or less a standard build. It's got an MFC03 in it. I've obviously changed the wheels, it's got aluminium wheels, chassis cover at the front, chassis cover at the back, engine cover, gearbox cover. Um, still determining or trying to make me mind up whether to paint this silver or chrome so it kind of looks like it blends in if that makes any sense to anyone. I'm going to give this a its first run really, I mean I'll give it a little test run in the kitchen but not out here so give it its first run and then put a trailer on the back see how it works with a trailer shouldn't be any different to any other one really and then I will give my opinions on this kit which a lot of people won't like but tough shit through the light sequence is quick while I've got this on so as soon as the power is switched on you have the orange lights in here uh, the two very dim LEDs in here and the orange lights down the side and that's it so then on my first sequence of lights I have the daylight running lights, I guess you call them, and rear lights, not the normal rear brake lights, just brake, uh, rear lights. Next stick would be uh, headlights and top lights. Next stick is Oh, and, 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 that's when it brings on the normal back lights with the brake lights. Um, next one would be full beam and fog, I'm guessing, on a real one. And then you have, as your form beam. Give it a little run and see. Got the hazards. seems to drive okay. Let's get a trailer.
golf, let me see Jesus Christ. That was loud. I have no idea what it was, but it was bloody loud. I shall continue. Something must be going on. That's three Apaches and whatever the hell that was. Woo! I shall continue. <laughs> Right, so it runs all right. Motor's a little noisy, but you turn motor and it's new. It should quieten up a bit after it's been used a little bit. Right, so to this. Scania 770S uh, right, Let's go through the manual as we talk about it This might be a long video We point out the good points and the bad points or my opinion of the good points and the bad points as we go and the bad points unfortunately outweigh the good points by a long shot. Right, standard servo setup, blah blah blah, chassis setup, blah blah blah. It's pretty much standard chassis. Until you get to the gearbox. Now, in the gearbox, Is it the gearbox, or I could be mistaken? No, I'm probably mistaken, it's not the gearbox. I'll take that back. Uh, no, it's not the gearbox, it's the axles actually. It's the rear axles, right, so... First bad point. This battery holder. The new battery holder. I don't know if you be able to see it. What's with the two screws and washers holding it on? Before you had a metal bar that went through, made a nice pivot hinge and a cap going over the top. Now they've skimped 
and made it all as one piece. It's a completely different battery tree and two screws and a washer holding it. The bit that opens where you put the battery in. Mm. Scrimp. Um, yeah, all the body or chassis up to here is fine, not a problem. Right, so in the chassis, in the, in the chassis. In the manual, we are up to uh, 38, where the side skirts go on. Now, they've done a good job on detailing the side skirts. Mm. Ish. No, they are nice. They are nice side skirts. Side skirts. The problem I have, and not just me, because Tim Thurston, 111 Polar Bear is building one of these as we speak. As you're listening to this, he's finishing one of these off. This skirt, I don't know if you know, opens. It's hinged. Well, it ain't hinged. We'll get to that in a minute. It opens so you can get to the MFC controls. You open it, it drops. It's not brilliant. As you open it further, the front actually hits the wheel arch. And I thought it was must be me, but no, Tim's is exactly the same. So, and there is no other way you can put it on. It can only go on one way. So, every time you open it, you're just rubbing the paint off the front because it's rubbing on the back of the wheel arch. Even to the point where you can, I don't know, you pick it up in the camera, you can see it moving the whole, even the steps are moving at the front. Because all it is, 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 let me find it in a manual and I will show you the stupid bloody setup of it. Where is it? Can you see it just now? No, oh, hold on. It's basically just two bits of plastic. Um, it's basically two bits of plastic with holes, and you put a bolt up through them into the the usual bar that comes out that looks a bit like these ones where you put the normal skirts on but obviously the threads upwards and it screws into it that's it so it's basically just resting on that bolt that's screwed up plenty of play as you can see so when you shut it you have to physically lift it to get it in and then the bottom don't sit properly so you have to around getting it under the wheel arch so that's my first well my first major gripe I've got I've had a few the gear uh, the wheels or the axles being one did I go past the axles I skip past the axles let's go back a bit where's the bloody axles back here right so putting the axles together can someone explain to me what is the point of when you put the shaft in here one of them stupid brass things one end and a bearing the other end either two brass things or two bearings what's the point of one of each it just it serves no purpose it's just ridiculous if they're going to give you bearings, give you bearings. Don't give you half a kit's worth of bearings. And bushes. That's the word I was looking for. Because that's ridiculous. So they've got a bush. Right, let's get this correct. Yep, 
Yep, so they have a, a bush and a bearing on the rod. So a bearing near the diff end and a bush at the outer end. And then the bit that connects the drive shaft to is also a bush. It just makes no sense at all. None whatsoever. Either do all bushes or do all bearings. You can't do half and half. It's just ridiculous. The same on the same bar. I wouldn't even mind, but it's on the same bar. You've got one of each. Makes no sense. These will arches. Glue them, fall off, glue them, fall off. I have put two screws down through the top. Much better. Can't see them, the body hides it. I don't know why they didn't do that. Because the silly little tabs they give you to glue, you've only got to catch it slightly, and this keeps banging it, as you can see. They fall off. And you have to use extra strong glue, and then you risk ruining your paint. So, my tip, two screws through the top, just a little tiny ones, holds it onto the, the floor, no problem. Then also, if you need to get them off at any time, you just undo the two screws, don't you? Right, they have actually set this out to have an MFC and an interior, which is, makes a change for Tamiya, because they usually either tell you to do, if you want an MFC, black out the windows, but They've actually laid it out in here how to do both, that most of us know anyway, which is good. There's a bit at the front where you can wrap your wires round, which is under the dashboard so you can't see. I like, that's a good point. It also gives you a diagram of where to run wires, if you want to make them nice and neat and everything. Not necessary in my book, but also good. I mean, especially with all this on it, you can't see them anyway. but. It's still helpful if you're a first time builder or whatever. It does actually give you MFC instructions in the manual. Another thing that's good. Right, now to the cab. The cab is gorgeous. It looks lovely. Looks lovely. It's as thin as shit. You can push it in as easy as anything, look. So they've obviously scrimped on material there. At some point, building this, I, I had to keep telling myself it was a Tamiya RC. Because you have to glue so much on it, I thought I was building an airfix kit. I don't understand why they've done this part of the side separate that you have to screw on. Again it's it's so thin and flimsy it's just everything just I don't understand if they'd have made that all as one mould surely it would have been stronger. This is all lovely this chrome trim but you have to glue it on. Now if you put glue on and you don't get it perfect first time, you risk ruining the paintwork you've just done. This window, they tell you to paint it. Well, why not just make it black in the first place? Why make it as a clear window that you then have to paint? And if you paint it from the inside, it looks shit. Tim Dunley's SD inside, he spent hours polishing the outside to get a, a nice shine on it because it looked crap. I just I gave up and just painted the outside. Don't care. Lost interest at that point. I loved the mirrors. I must admit they have done a brilliant job on more accurate mirrors than the norm crap they usually put on. And they do fold. They are really nice mirrors. They look the part There's a lot you can catch and break, but that's if you want to put them on there. Uh, what was 
next bit. Right, I do like these, the way they've held the, the sides on there. And the, rather than a silly screw, nut and bolt through the plastic that tends to break. These are a nice touch. As I said, there's some good points and there's some crap points. Again, these, they tell you to put it on with double-sided sticky tape and then glue this on. As, well, Tim told me yesterday, but I, I knew because I'd done mine last week, although mine was a bit of a tight fit. If you're going to build one of these, ignore the manual, glue that on the window first, then stick it in, then put this panel on. So much easier and less risk of getting paint, well, glue on your paint. tells you to paint behind the grill. Why? You can't see it. It's just, just a waste of time. Complete waste of paint. Masking up and painting. You cannot physically see behind the grill. You don't need to paint shit. It's just a waste of time painting that. The other thing and all, now I'm, I'm a fan of the MFC. I've got it in most of my lorries. There isn't enough sockets in it to light every light on this truck, hence why I haven't got the roof bar on. I could do it other ways, but I couldn't be asked. I was kind of losing interest with the amount of gluing I had to keep doing. And it doesn't look it by saying, well, you have to glue these bits on. You have to glue all these silver bits on. You have to glue the door handles in, which you do on most of them. Nice touch. This is actually screwed on there, where on the Mercedes Actros it was glued on and keeps falling off. Uh, these strips on the top are glued on. The aerials obviously are glued on. This black strip around the light is glued on. This top bit is glued on, which hasn't stuck because it's coming off. So I need to put a bit of glue on there. I can't, this chrome strip here, glued on. The chrome strips on the side, glued on. Which one of these is coming off again? <clears throat> I can't understand why they've done it on the actress and actress actress and this. Why this front panel is separate to the main roof? It would have been easier to mould it just all as one, and again stronger, because running wires through it pushes it out. You have to start chomping away at everything, which is not good. They give you slots here. A three mil hole at the back to put an MF, uh, put an MF, put an LED in, but nowhere to run your wire, so you have to make your own hole. But also no light bucket, so you have to glue the LED in. But that's not the biggest problem with gluing them LEDs in. When you actually get to the bumper, right on the front, let's get to the bumper. This is my biggest bugbear of this kit. The one thing I hate about this kit, or the, the thing I hate the most about this kit, is there is in the front we have one, two, three, four LEDs per side, which is crap actually. One, two, three, four, five LEDs per side. So I've used one more than they said give you an old, to me, you give you an old, put an LED in it. What's the point of having a slot if you can't put something in it? These you can't even put lights in because there is no slot to put an, an LED. I guess you could drill out the back and everything. Again, like I said, by the time I got to this, lost, lost a lot of interest in it. So left these. Right, five LEDs in the front. There is two five mil that you have to glue in, and there are three three mil, two of which you have to glue in. So out of five LEDs, you have to glue four of them, each side. Gluing LEDs in is shit. There is no other word for it, it's shit. It's a complete cop out 
because someone in their wisdom have decided, oh, we put LEDs facing down instead of straight in the back now. So yes, you look in, you can't physically see the LEDs, but remember, it's a toy. Who gives a shit if you can see an LED? So they're down. And the only way you can hold them in is you have to glue them. That to me is absolutely disgusting. If you happen to put the wrong LED in the wrong slot, you risk breaking the LED or damaging it in whatever way to change it, then you've got to change the whole bloody lot out again. It's, it's my biggest bugbear on this kit, is the fact that you have to glue LEDs. I've bought cheaper kits and they come with light buckets and holders for the LEDs. That is such a cop out. It does give you nice instructions. Like I say, the instructions or Tamiya instructions are always good, but I like the MFC ones I've added. So if you if you're using an MFC three or a one. It tells you what lights you can use and where, but the problem with that is it says in the roof lights to put the orange. I don't want orange. Who wants orange in roof light? They're bloody high beam driving lights, spotlights. You have white, not orange. It marks out everything you can have off the LED, but you, you quickly notice. So down here is five LEDs. In the book is only three. Uh, you've got the four on the front, but I bought an aftermarket board that's got them in and the lights underneath. So you only got two plugs, not four. If you do these, even more. Um, so they've got two in here. They have the five in the roof, which you would normally have on, say, a night hauler or a king hauler, you've got the orange lights on the top, so you'd use them in the spotlights, fog lights, not, not fog lights, spotlights, running lights, whatever, in the light bar. Then they've got these as auxiliary lamps. Then you've got, according to the book, if you're using an MFC03, main beam, 5mm. Um, headlight, 5mm indicator and auxiliary light so it's, yeah it's four sorry not three four each side that's it now they give you all bits on the front so you've got two lights in the skirt plus the ones underneath you got to plug them somewhere but not according to this you don't use them why put them on there if you can't use them <coughs> It's when you look at the, the ones in the top, it looks like there's two sides to it. But there's only one plot spot to put an LED in one of them, not both of them. Like I say, they, they skipped out on these because they know they haven't got any, enough LEDs in their own kits to put in them. The back has place for four LEDs. This tells you to only put three in it. The normal three, so you got your, your side brake, your reverse, and your indicator. I added one because I, I, I like the extra light at the back. But then you've got to remember by adding them, it takes away another socket for any lights up here. It depends on what lights you want and how many you want, I guess. It's, that's, that's pretty much right at the end of the manual, but. You have to, well, you glue, the, you glue the wipers on, which you do on any of them. But then you've got the bit in front of the wiper that covers the wipers, you have to glue on. And then there's another bit that glues on that. These glue on, this glues on, these glue on. It, it, there is so much gluing in this kit, it is unbelievable. And certain things don't fit right. The mirrors don't fit properly in. You have to squeeze and hold them. They don't click in like the old ones used to, or just nicely sit, like bed in. 
So, depending on what glue you use, you've got to sit there for bloody 20 minutes holding it for it to go off or put a clamp on it or something. But it's it's not the best kit in my opinion. Mainly down to the fact that the amount of bloody gluing you have to do. And that side's good. They could have put a proper hinge on it or something. It's just... I don't understand how they worked it out that they've put a, they've deliberately designed the skirt to open, but not give it enough clearance that it hits the wheel arch. Bit mad, but there you go. So that is my opinion on the 770S. I'm sure. Other people have different opinions, that's why this their opinions and not my opinion. So for how much extra this cost to the other scanner, the normal scanner, the R scanner if you like. It's, they seem to have scrimped on quite a few places. But like I said, once it's built it does look nice. It is a nice looking kit and obviously I'm biased because I think it looks brilliant in this red. The other good point, I don't know, it might have just been me having a bit of luck, but the cab don't tilt. You hook the back in, slide the front down and put two screws, then you put the bumper on. So you've got to get all the wiring done with a bumper hanging before you do it. The cab went on so easy with the MFC in there. That's why they haven't tilted it on the hinge, because it will hit the MFC. But you put it on a slight angle, hook it in, and the front just fell straight down. There was no issues at all. So that, that was good, I think. But like I say, it's so, I can't believe how flimsy it feels on the sides. It's just so, there's hardly anything there. Well, that's it. If anyone's still awake, that's my opinion.